Hi, I'm Dan, creator of Turf War. In Turf War, you play as neighborhood rivals who are locked in a bitter feud to prove who is the best on the block. To do that, you're going to need to convince all of the other folks in the neighborhood that you have the better yard. Once the last of those people is swayed to someone's side, the game is over. Whoever has the most points in their yard and from the neighbors that they swayed is going to be declared the victor. To set up, give each player a home card, a garage, a piggy bank, a 3x3 three three grid of dirt cards that become their yard, and three starting tool cards that are each marked with a stop. Those starting tool cards will become their hand. Next, shuffle the store-backed cards together and set the top five face up next to the deck. That becomes the store, a common market area where players will acquire new cards. Set the trash card nearby. That becomes kind of a discard pile where cards are removed from the store or from players' yards. Next, shuffle the neighbor deck and set the top five neighbor cards face up next to it. This is the unswayed neighbor's row. These five neighbors are the ones whose admiration you will be battling for throughout the game. Once the last of those five is swayed, that triggers the end of the game. Each of those neighbors has their own wants and desires. So Sylvia here wants to see three different plant cards in your yard. Edith wants to see a card in your yard that's very expensive, costing $7 or more. Some neighbors don't care what's going on in your yard. They want you to do something for them. Maximilian here, he just wants a $20 bribe. Each of the neighbors that you sway is going to be worth some amount of points, but that's not the only way to gain points. You can also pick up points from grass in your yard and from other cards that you put in your yard, especially plants and ornaments. All right, so whoever did yard work most recently gets to go first. So let's go ahead and take the first time. You're going to start by deciding whether you are home or away for your turn. So stay home and work on the yard, or go away and get more cards from the store. I've got all these starting tool cards in my hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and spend this turn at home and work on my yard a bit. You'll notice that there are two actions on the home card. You can do either of those, you can do both of those, and you can do them in any order on your home turn. The first action lets you play a card from your hand. So let's use that to play this toolbox card. To play the toolbox, reveal it from your hand and put it into your garage. You'll notice that all of the tools have a red play action on them. Do that play action as soon as you play the card. Toolbox's play action lets you play two more cards from your hand. So let's play our next tool, a watering can. I'll do that the same way, revealing it from my hand and putting it in my garage. Watering can's play action says to turn a dirt in my yard to grass. So I'll pick a dirt, turn it over to its grass side. I now have a point that I've gained from that grass, and I also have a place where I can put something in my yard. Anytime that you see that green plus sign, that's a space where you can now add a, an ornament, a feature, or a plant card that's gonna help improve your yard. For my second toolbox play, I have the rake in my hand, and rake lets me trash a card from my yard or from the store. There aren't any cards in my yard, but I don't like that pest that's hanging out in the store. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the rake from my hand, putting it in my garage, and trashing that nasty skunk from the store. Now there's nothing else that I can do on my turn. I'm out of cards in my hand, I can't play any more cards, and I can't sway a neighbor yet using Holmes' other action. So I'll pass over to my rival. Our rival's gonna do some stuff now, but we'll just fast forward to the exciting part. Our turn. So for our next turn, we don't have any cards in our hand. So instead of staying home, we're going to go away. So I'll turn my home away card to its away side. Now away has two actions, work to gain $5 and buy a card from the store. The first thing that I'm going to do is work. So I'll add $5 to my piggy bank. Next, I'll use away's other action to buy one card from the store. That tomato patch looks pretty good. So let's pick that up. I deduct $2 from my piggy bank, take the tomato patch from the store, 
and put it into my garage. That's left an open slot in this door, so I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the top card of the store deck and set it down to fill the slot. I've worked, I've bought a card, there's nothing else I can do on my away turn, so back to our arrival. On my next turn, I have to decide if I'm gonna go back home or if I'm gonna stay away, work some more, and buy some more cards. I'm gonna stay away for this round because that fountain's looking pretty good. I will work again using Away's work action, adding another $5 to my piggy bank and bringing me up to $8 total. And I have a lot of money that I can spend and I'm gonna spend six of it on that fountain. So using Away's buy action, I remove $6 from my piggy bank, take the fountain from the store, put it into my garage and restock the store using the top card of the deck. Now I've revealed an event while I was restocking. Whenever you reveal an event, you do it immediately. Recycling Day says that you shuffle the store and the trash pile into the store deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle all of those back together and restock five new cards for the store. Now I have worked, I have bought a card from the store, my away turn is done and I'll pass to my rival. My next turn, I want to start playing some of these new cards that I bought. So I'm going to go back home. I turn my away card over to its home side. That's the trigger to get all of those cards out of your garage and put them into your hand. Now, I can only play one card during my home turn using home's action, but luckily I've got my trusty toolbox back. I'll play my toolbox, putting it in my garage, and immediately letting me play two more cards using Toolbox's play action. For the first card, I'll play Watering Can, flipping a second dirt in my yard over to its grass side. To play a green plant card, a silver feature card, or a blue ornament card, you'll reveal it from your hand and put it on top of any place in your yard. So the second card that I'll play using my toolbox will be this tomato patch. And I'll put that face up on top of this place in my yard. Now I'm out of play actions and I still don't have enough to sway any of the neighbors. So that's the end of my turn and back over to my right. So at the start of my turn, tomato patch lets me decide if I want to trash it and immediately gain $5. I don't want to do that quite yet, so I'm going to leave the tomato patch in my yard for now. Next, I'll decide if I want to be home or away from my turn. There are more cards that I want to play this turn, so I'm going to stay home. You'll notice that I don't pick up the tool cards from my garage when I stay home for multiple turns in a row. You have to go from away to home if you want to get those cards out of your garage. So using home's play action, I can play one card from my hand. I play the fountain the same way as the tomato patch, revealing it from my hand, putting it face up on top of a place in my yard. Now I can't play more cards this turn because I didn't use toolbox. So my home play action is done. I do now have a purple moon symbol in my yard, and that signifies an end action, something that happens at the end of each of your turns. Fountain's end action says to turn a dirt in my yard over to its grass side. So I'll go ahead and do that now. You'll continue in this pattern over time, building up your yard. Let's fast forward a little bit to a later state in the game where we've built up our yard. So in this case, on my turn, I'm gonna stay home and I can play this third plant card into my yard. So once I play this cactus as my card for the turn, now I can do that sway action, take Sylvia from the unswayed neighbor's row and put her in my sway. Sylvia is now giving me five victory points at the end of the game that'll count towards my score. I don't restock the swayed neighbor's row when I take Sylvia from it. The number of available neighbors is gonna tick down throughout the game. So once that fifth neighbor is swayed, that's it. Let's fast forward again. So, now I've bought a termite card from the store and termites are a purple pest card that are going to just eat all of the cards under them. This is something that I want to play in my rival's yard, but I have to wait until they're away in order to do that. So this turn, I'm in luck. My rival is away. I'm going to go home, get all those cards out of my garage and play that termites onto a nice juicy pile of cards in their yard. As soon as a card's played in your yard, 
you're the one who has to do the action. So that red play action on the termites is something that my rival has to do when I play the termites there. Unlike plants, features, and ornaments, you can play a pest anywhere on top of any card or any pile as long as you can play cards in that yard, either because it's your own yard or because the rival who owns that yard is a weapon. So at the end of the game, you'll add up all of the points from the grass in your yard, add up all of the points from cards in your yard, and add up all the points from neighbors in your spread. Whoever has the most points is the winner. In the event of a tie, whoever swayed more neighbors will win the game. And that's Turf War. If you ever have questions about a specific card while you're playing, head to the website. You'll be able to search for that card and see detailed rules on different interactions and examples of how to play the card correctly. Hope you enjoy the game and thanks so much for watching.